Just because something is unpopular does not make it bad. It just means it's unpopular. It could be that a lot of people don't know about it. It could be that there's a lot of stupid people in the world. There could be, um, it's just misunderstood. It's widely misunderstood. So um, this is, um, somebody had sent this to me. This is from Hi5 Vega, which is that, that's Robert. Um, and he's having a discussion, little uh, thing about uh, what's the cheap stuff in car audio. And basically they go on to, uh, I'm not going to say that they talked about me. They're just talking about, I think, home builders in general. But right at about 32 minutes, they um, they get into this weird uh, cult thing about JL Audio. And um, uh, I don't know who this guy is, whatever his name is. Um, he's like, oh, I really love JL Audio, but, you know, they're okay. And it's like, okay. So, um, again, I'm not, I like JL Audio. I like JL Audio. I think it looks really good. Now, as far as the value, the performance for, you know, dollar, not a really great deal. I was talking about somebody today, like um, there's, I forget which company, I haven't really done any research on it, um, but somebody was saying that um, like a new badass truck, like the top end Yukon or GMC or whatever, is like $100,000 now that, that the dealers want. And if Hyundai came out with something that sold for, let's say, 30 grand, guess what? People would buy it, even if it's shitty. Because you're like, do I really need to pay $100,000 for luxury, for leather, for all that kind of stuff? You know? So, again, I, I don't want to answer that for you. So, this is stuff that I just build in my garage, right? This one and this one. This is, for reference, for size, this is the JL Audio. It's this one has been underwater, I think, in California for a long time. Um, the top plate uh, came off. I had it drilled and tapped for a, a, an alternative pattern, which I think is the 160 pattern, uh, the five-inch pattern, and then because the original pattern, I forget which it is. It's a little bit wider. It's in between, and then this is uh, just a triple stack uh, three-inch motor that I make. So again, I made these at home. Uh, I my buddies that. Uh, own a machine shop helped me out on some of the stuff. This is, uh, you know, the buyout from Concept, which is what I use this top plate on. I made this uh, T yoke, which I actually recycled. There you go, bag end. So I don't know if you guys remember them. Bag end was uh, it's supposed to be the promise of a uh, uh, new technology um, about uh, low end uh, reproduction for PA and also for studios. Um, and it, it wasn't. It, and if you look at their design, it's uh, it's actually um, borrowed from something that Bob Carver realized about his. Um, I forget the name of it. I don't like it either. But it's it's four twelves in. Uh, it just has a uh, baffle. It's an open air baffle for woofers. And what happens is the FS is really high, like a hundred hertz, and then you cross it below the FS which means they're gonna get real floppy. And then of course there's no enclosure. So again, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying I don't recommend it, that's all. But uh, there's lots of ways to do things. I had a, uh, some guy got real annoyed with me last night cause I didn't have his woofers done. And he's like, I'm coming down to get my cabinets. I was like, your cabinets are dumb anyway. And they're from Servum Vega. And I was trying to think about how do I, how do I explain that the design is bad in the, the very beginning. And that's a hard thing for people to understand and comprehend when they're like, well, it's from a reputable company. I go, right, but you gotta understand that from an engineering perspective and also from a marketing perspective, a lot of companies will get away with the bare minimum or some bullshit, but you don't wanna believe it because you feel betrayed. And you certainly don't wanna feel betrayed because that's one of the worst feelings in the world. So, um, but, Again, I'm just the messenger. <laughs> you got to understand that the audio companies are not even run by politicians, right? And you don't like politicians, right? Why? Because they say one thing and they mean something else, right? They're always doing this double speak bullshit where they're, they're talking about persons, but they're not really talking about humans. They're talking about corporations and labor unions. That's what a person is in the legal term, right? And you got to remember a lot of these people are lawyers and they want to live in the, they're, they're fucking bougie. They, they want to be above you but not quite like a billionaire status, right? And that's where politicians sit. Prosecutors, judges, doctors, realtors, those kind of idiots. But uh, 
Um, so anyways, those people will hold public office and they're not that they're accountable, but at least their decisions are public and you can, you know, say something about it. Right. So there's that level of accountability as for an owner or a designer or a marketer for a car audio company, zero, there is zero accountability for these people. Okay. So, and you got to understand why they're doing this in the first place. It's because they love music. Nobody loves music that much. Anybody that loves music like that gets paid shit and works in a symphony orchestra. That, and that's an artist, right? They love it so much. They're willing to, you know, make their fingers bleed so that they can be in the whatever symphony, whatever of Philadelphia, New York, whatever it is. Those are artists. Those are different people that do th things for different reasons. People that own car audio companies, right? They do it for the money. Now, is it all for the money? No. Sometimes you get people like, um, what's his name? In fact, his username on Instagram is called that sundown guy. Now it's that weird redheaded Dick, Steve, what is his name? Dilbeck, Dildo, Steve, is it Steve Dildo? David, I don't know, I, don't, I forget his name. I'll leave a link to him though. Um, he is quite unforgettable and unremarkable, but you can go promote him uh, because now he's called that sundown guy. So I guess he couldn't make it in his own brand or whatever like that, even though he is still promoting his own brand, but now he's that sundown guy. Anyways, Scott, that's his name, Scott Dilbeck. That's his name. So. But again, he does what he does because it makes a good living and it also raises his status in society. It, 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 and again, you can't fool all the people all the time. One of the people he's not fooling is me, right? And that's, that's all I'm doing is calling him out because the behavior that he showed towards me was completely unacceptable, completely unprofessional. And to me, he's a filthy piece of shit. Again, that's just my opinion. Uh, you know, I'm sure his mom thinks differently of him. So... And as far as jail audio goes, one of the things that they talk about in that video with Robert Vegas, they're like, why would you ever say fuck JL or fuck that brand or whatever that is? The reason I say that is because JL audio took the time to send little old me a cease and desist for handing out, giving away JL audio decals. Then now they weren't uh, jail branded, right? They had the little boots, right? Which are snow boots, which is, more in line for a ripoff of Alpine, right? Which is probably what it really is, right? Because there's a lot of inside jokes, you know, like that whole thing about like Bitcoin is owned by the CIA and all that kind of stuff. So you can easily have a ledger and tracker of you, you, if you're exchanging Bitcoins for, you know, drugs or children or whatever you're buying on Bitcoin. Anyways, so a lot of times, a lot of logos are, are built like that. Now, hold on are designed like that with a little tongue in cheek, right? And so then I took it to the next level where I go, okay, you know what this is? This is JL. This is what JL really stands for. And that's what this is. So again, this is a parody brand, meaning it's making fun of. And, and I, do I wish JL harm? They take a dirt nap. I'm not going to lose any sleep. Okay. So um, I, I think they need to be less uh, arrogant. That, and again, this is just my opinion as a, as a consumer and as a uh, human being. Uh, do I think they need to send out cease and desist to everybody to show who's boss? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, in fact, that's why I got a, a phone call uh, from one of their top guys. I forget what his name is. Scoot, Scooter. Anyways, he, he started Extant, sold it to my tech group, and then now he works at uh, um, JL. So, and he's, and he's whatever anyways. So, but I got him on the phone recorded of saying, really jizz llama, which is, I, I can't tell you the kind of gold that that phrase and that recording is worth to me. Uh, it's delightful because as a poor person, a person of poverty, also known as a popper doing car audio and being interested in car audio was, was, it was so detached for me. I've been scarred for life by the way that car audio shops and their owners and the brand owners, which is like JL, the way that they just piss on people and the way that they rip people off is completely unacceptable to me, even on any sort of standard. And so are they actually out there killing people? No, Patrick, do you, uh, what was it? One of the arguments that uh, Robert makes, Robert Vega makes, he goes, oh, we all blow money on dumb shit. No, we don't. Not everybody. Just you, Robert. Uh, 
And that's what I'm trying to help you guys do is not blow your money on dumb bullshit. Now, if you can get into something and then flip it or keep it for six months to a year, guess what? Your life is better. You got to sample the product. You, you, you weren't in for anything. You got out, maybe broke even, and you can try something else, or you made a little profit. That's what I want to encourage. That's the behavior that I want you to do. Why do I want you to do that? Because that's what I wish somebody would have told me in 1995, 1994, the last time I was in a car audio shop and actually bought something. Um, and there was nobody there to tell me that reality, to deliver that message of that there is a, a, a better way, there is a different way to live and still maintain your passion and love for high performance music. And that is to teach yourself and to learn. If you, now, if you wanna go the long way, fucking be an engineer. Go, go learn how to be an engineer, a structural engineer, electrical engineer, all that kind of stuff. You'll learn that, the, you know, like it doesn't matter what kind of building you build, it, the building doesn't care what brand it is or what arch, architecture or, um, uh, what is it? The guy that builds a building, designs a building. Arca, I don't know. Uh, architect. So it doesn't care what architect uh, designed the building. It just, there's steel beams or there's concrete beams or there's reinforced concrete or however you do it, trusses. It doesn't care. And so the brand of audio this is, right? Does this care that this used to be bag end? No, it doesn't care. It, now it's this fucking badass three inch no vent motherfucker see the, the, we cut the vent off so it just uh, dead ends um and it's it's fucking badass motor and it's it's right on par or better than something like an re audio Res resonant engineering re audio mt in fact it's bigger than the mt mike tango um and so here, here's another one so i have an excess of w7 10 inch motors and i've bolted it to a 12 inch frame with spacers now because of the gap size i just and for affordability i'm going to keep the original coil which you can buy from lord of bass for whatever they're always out because they're always going through these but you can make a single three ohm 12 inch uh that handles a good amount of power uh for really cheap in fact the conversion kit that we give uh comes with a dropping kit your choice of cap i have a couple of different choices of cone um and it's uh 200 bucks shipped that's it on a on an 800 dollars woofer you take the motor off sell the frame uh for 40 50 dollars sell the clamp system for 50 to 60 dollars and then you come back and you buy this kit from me and that's just me anybody can actually offer this i don't there's nothing proprietary about this in fact i use the 13w7 hardware because it's a little bit longer but uh, um uh, and I'm about recycling and upcycling and, and utilizing what you have in front of you um, because you don't need to buy everything. Now, if you're just one of these guys that um, happens to be lucky in life and uh, while you're watching YouTube uh, like a poor person, uh, fuck off, go away. Uh, don't try to relate to the, your poor people friends. Uh, go be rich, go be, you know, go eat babies or whatever Tom Hanks does. Uh, go do that for the, for this channel and this video and these people that I'm addressing. These are for people that are poor, like I was, uh, am, uh, I'm not rich. Even though you look at all this stuff and you go, Oh, Patrick, you're rich. No, 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 no. I still struggle with rent every month. So in fact, I got some good news, but I don't want to jinx it. So I'm not going to tell you about it. Um, uh, I, I want to, but I'm not going to tell you about it. Anyways. Um, the idea is to help one another. And that's what I like. And that's what I liked about skateboarding. I grew up in the skateboarding community and near the end of when I was really into it in the mid nineties, there started to get this weird vibe of just rich kids that would purposely destroy their skateboard after they did a trick or they would get mad and throw a tantrum. It was called, uh, oh, what was it called? I don't even remember because it was so dumb. I don't want to remember it. Focus. It was called focusing your board, whatever that means. It was like doing a karate chop where you just, boom, you step down on the tail and it breaks the tail off. And you're like, ah, fuck you board, fuck you skateboard. I didn't land my trick. And it was, I thought it was the dumbest thing in the world. Now, the video that made it popular, which I, if, I, if I remember right, it was like eight street video. That's how old it is. Uh, or something like that was a rubbish heap, which also known as rub, rub a sheep, rubbish heap, rubbish heap. Um, that one, they started doing it and 
dude, it was a huge money maker for the skateboard company. Because now you got dumb rich kids breaking their boards on purpose in order to get attention or because they're bratty uh, or for whatever reason. And uh, that's when all of a sudden they started selling clothing, you know, $100 for a pair of pants, for fucking stuff that they were buying surplus from somewhere else, from, from a different market. Me, um, there was one time and I was working as a telemarketer and uh, I went over to the grocery store to cash my check. And for some reason, the girl miscounted and gave me an extra hundred. Uh, at the time, I was not the honest most person. And so I didn't give it back, but I went across the street, Tri-City Mall, to the JCPenney and I bought some size 52 shorts, which were baggy and you needed a belt for anyway. And they weren't a hundred dollars. They were like on clearance because they're like, who is this fat? And they're wearing jean shorts. Well, at the time I was like probably 180 pounds and it looked super baggy and it was like in fashion. And so that's, that's where I spent my money so that I could be in fashion, but I didn't have to pay the, the exorbitant price. Cause I'm not, I'm not a rich person. I'm not, I'm not like that. And uh, I, I really, don't like the bougie attitude of some people that when you look at it on a relative scale, they're not rich either. But when you're richer than all the poor people around you, then some people let that go to their head and then they become assholes. Well, the truth is they were always assholes. They just couldn't afford it. See, that's what that's, and that they say, you know, root, money is the root of all evil. It's not. People are evil. They just don't have, they can't afford it most of the time. So they're nice to each other, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and then when they get a little freedom, then that's when they get, you know, rude and mean and all this kind of stuff. And, and then like me, you don't get invited to uh, Christmas. <laughs> so, but, um, uh, and that's fine. I'd rather live with myself and knowing that I tried my best and I got to keep my integrity and I got to keep my dignity and, and see if I could make it fulfilling my dreams and being a, a woofer designer artist or whatever I do here. So, and that's why I bring in these videos and that's why I will continually shout down, um, yeah, I'll call them idiots, idiots like these two knuckleheads in the video, um, that really don't know what they're talking about. That really don't have the experience. They're really just a, what's called a prosumer, which is a professional consumer. Uh, sometimes they do some professional stuff, but really they just are, they happen to be popular and that does not mean that it's good. Right? The Kardashians are popular. Does that mean they're good? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, um, again, a lot of this stuff is all science based. Learn some science, take some engineering courses. There's free, but in fact, I'll put a link in the description that of like, I think it's every textbook that you could ever want in college is free online. So, and, and Elon Musk is famous for saying this is that if you want to learn something, everything is basically free online to learn. Now, if you want a degree so that you can get a job being someone's monkey, then that's something totally different. You got to go eat a bunch of turds because that's what the company is looking for. They're looking for somebody hungry that's got a lot of dependents, but it has a really good education. And so then they give you your big break and then you're supposed to be grateful for them shitting in your face for the next 30 years when they lay you off and take your 401k. So, and again, I'm not a fan of that either. So that's why I've been doing what I've been doing been doing and when i had the opportunity in 2003 to to get out of the grind to get out of the nine to five i did it i went fucking balls deep in that aids butthole and i came out alive and i did great and every deal that i come across whether it was the diamond audio amplifier deal whether it was the serum vega uh crashed and burned deal um the orion deal where i got the magnetizers and some other stuff and again i just keep flipping uh, if, it, if you ever want to, I'll put, I'll put some links to episodes of the Ferengi from Deep Space Nine. Those guys are fucking wizards. I love those guys. I mean, they're ugly as fuck and it's kind of a shot at Jews, which I'm not a fan of, but it's the information that they carry and the story that they have behind them is wonderful. And it shows you about that you don't need money to be empowered and you don't need um, companies or brands or things like that in order to live a really good life. And that's, those are, those are, they call them hacks, but all it is is just an inventive, creative way to live. Um, and if you want to see my point of reference, go watch uh, Mad Max Road Warrior and then watch Thunderdome and watch those like 20 times. Th those are my mantras. Those are the things that drive me. I don't know why, but they just don't watch that Fury Road. That was a piece of shit. It's, it, was, it was like a, a movie to promote a video game. It was kind of dumb. 
But uh, there's something magical about the desperateness of Road Warrior and also that in the future everyone will be gay. Um, and then Thunderdome sort of smooths that out and really plays with your imagination about how would it, it would affect children. How, how quickly is um, information lost from generation to generation when it's, when it's hearsay? And how valuable things become in, say, the land of the blind, right? The one-eyed man is king. And so if you can be that guy that's smart enough to see through the bullshit of politicians, through car audio companies and manufacturers, uh, or even just importers is what they're called. They're importers and marketers uh, that control the brand. That's it. They don't, they don't even make anything. Uh, and that's how slick they think they are, and they're getting away with it. And uh, again, I, I don't, I really don't want to shit on JL, but they've sort of made it where I have to, because otherwise people don't listen. And, 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 and I think it's urgent that you understand uh, of what this company is doing. When they're buying and making something, again, they're having it made in a factory somewhere overseas, China, for like, say, 5 to $10, and then they're wholesaling it for $150, and then they're retailing it, right? The, the MSRP suggested retail price of $300, and I'm talking about the uh, W1. They're, they're suggesting a retail of uh, $300, and then plus tax. See, and then also you take these sort of unaccountable people that work for the city and the government, they don't care about that because that brings them more money, right? And then they give their brother the contract to, to fix the toilets for, you know, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's how that works. It's all corrupt. It's gross. It's disgusting. And a lot of Americans pee on and and turn their nose at, up at uh, like uh, Mexico or China about corruption. Guess what? Corruption is everywhere, but it doesn't have to be in your heart. Now, now when I say that. Right, and you can get into like, you know, George Bush and the points of light and all that kind of stuff and Randy Travis, um, but you don't have to, okay? You can still l live an underground life. And that's one of the reasons why it's called Robot Underground. Slave Underground. Robot means slave. Underground just means underground. Meaning secret, you don't talk about it, okay? Now, I, I've been forced to talk about it and, and sort of make things really, really public because of the Nerdy Girls. and. So then I'm going to like, okay, fucking everything's on fire. And like I had some clients over here today and I was like, you know, I don't give a shit if the whole industry fucking burns down. Uh, uh, I know I would survive and, and, and I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, I think all this stuff is overpriced anyway. If you consider what this thing costs to manufacture and what the materials cost, you're talking about in materials, you're talking about pennies, pennies. Uh, and then if you're talking about Chinese manufactured cost, you're talking about uh, maybe, um, maybe $60 for something this elaborate. And then this of course is like three, $4. That's it. But as a whole, oh, you're talking about $1,800, right? That's what JL charges for the 13W7, $1,800. That's what's that worth. And you know, what's funny is if you want to compare like they do in the video to other industries that charge a lot for bullshit, like he was talking about um, camera companies charge 600 or $6,000 for a lens. Again, just because they make it, and someone buys it doesn't mean it's good or it's worth the purchase. You got to use common sense, right? I love it. I love it and I hate it when Apple advertises that you can make a whole movie on your fucking phone. It's like, are you? Yeah, you're retarded. So I, I don't I don't care about that. I don't care about Apple either. So but guess what? You can do the same thing on an Android phone for a fraction of the cost. So anyways, I love you guys. I will do some more rants and stuff today. I got some woofers in from Gravity that I want to test. Um, my buddy in San Francisco who does recones, um, he got a hold of the Gravity, is it Warlord, Warzone? One of those. The frame looks amazing and it's got a nine inch spider on it. It's 15 inch. Um, I think he's replacing the motor on it. Um, and uh, that's Charlie Havens, by the way. Sorry, I didn't mention his name. Charlie Havens, uh, you can find him on Facebook. Um, he does really good work. Um, and he's trying to support his family and I'm trying to get him off the grid as well so that he can stay home with his family and, and build stuff. And that's what I do for my builders. I want guys that are hungry and, and guys that are willing to put themselves out there and be different and be okay with being different. Um, uh, that's what I'm looking for is people that are basically sick and tired of being sick and tired and they want to change in their life. And I want to show you how to gradually do it. Don't fucking... 
I, I don't recommend doing what I did unless you're in that same circumstance, which in my circumstance, um, I, I spent five grand when I told the wife I was going to spend 500 and it, it, I put it all in credit cards, which is not the end of the world. It's not a big deal. I ended up having to use like eight credit cards. It's fucking hilarious. And, uh, and then I happened to get a job in, in the Bay area that paid like $800 a day plus expenses. Uh, so it was basically a vacation, a working vacation. And so after I think a month or two of that, I was able to pay off that five grand. And so I came home debt free with a house full of equipment that needed to be sold. And that's how I got started. Now, if you can land a deal like that, fucking go for it. Uh, just put, apply yourself and you'll have to work through all your demons and all your stuff that, that I had to work through. So, and, but that's, this is how I'm able to do it. And this is how I'm able to manage it. It ends up looking like this when you don't have anybody to help you clean. Um, in fact, this area actually got cleaned. I don't know if you can tell. Um, and then I wrecked it again uh, when uh, Hayden comes over. So Hayden helped me clean this up last week and he did a really great job. And then I'm like, I just fucking wrecked it again. Again, I don't spend a lot of time cleaning because that's a, a waste of my time and my uh, talent. I'm more valuable doing other things, right? Like if you ask Elon Musk, you know, would you sweep the floors? He can, and he has, but is that the best use of his time? And he's like, oh, Patrick, you're, you're uh, comparing yourself to Elon Musk. Elon Musk used to be a regular guy too, okay? And, and he even talks about this as well, about that everyone has the ability to become extraordinary if you decide to choose that path. Is it an easy path? No, and that's why most people don't do it. Maybe that was the wind. Maybe it was some cats. I found some cats living back here. There's a calico cat. It was, she was a young mama. She was real skinny. And then she had uh, two white babies with her, which it was hilarious because I've never seen a kitten that aggressive. She's feral. One of them ran in there, and then the other one ran over here. No, nope, they're not there, so. I don't know. Anyways, um, what I'm saying is that with a little bit of luck and some a lot of hard work, I should say a lot of hard work, um, you too can work for yourself. Now, getting out of that is difficult, and that's what the good news is about. So I'm hoping that I can learn how to graduate out. If you look at uh, Robert Kiyosaki's um, uh, quadrant thing, it's a little weird. Uh, but it talks about being an employee, then moving to sort of self-employed and then moving to uh, an owner. And then finally, the, the, the awesome baby eating quadrant, which is um, investor, where you make your money just buying and selling stuff and investing in things. So but anyways, I'll leave that for you. This is 28 minutes that you've lost. Hopefully you've uh, gleaned some uh, juicy bits out of it. I gotta go check to see if my other shipment came in. We got these amps in too from Memphis. It's a street reference, which is, you know, just basic Chinese stuff, 600 watt peak. It's a three or 400 watt amp, I'm sure. For, well, it's 50 amp, so it's 500 watts. So that's pretty close. I don't know why they would, they should have rated it peak thousand. So let me get this. Little jiggle jiggle, yeah, 50 amp, so. Again, find the best price online, let me know, and then I'll, I'll usually beat it for like five to 10%. So, and these are from my uh, refurber guy, so that he gives a three year warranty against defects, which is great, because um, then you only have to pay the shipping on it to get it back to me to uh, either get a new one or uh, exchange it or something like that. It's only 20 bucks. Anyways, I love you guys. I'll talk more about this project. Uh, I'll give you the details and show you some of your options. Again, this is the 10W7 motor has turned into a 12. You can also turn it into a 10 if you want. It uses a standard bolt hell, uh, circle of five inch, uh, but I'll talk about that in another video. I love you, I will talk to you later.